comic spot come on in have a seat invite your neighbors even if you don't like them just make them wear a mask or something anyway matthew over here in the other square he's 22 years old and graduated from new york university's gallatin school holy toledo in 2020 this past may do you know what i was doing this past may yeah neither do i um <laughs> Matthew was recently a guest on the Today Show with Hoda and Jenna, OMG, where he did celebrity impressions and was surprised by, com by comedian Sebastian Maniscalco. Holy Toledo. <laughs> Sebastian played his videos and rated him as, a, as a, doing his impressions of Sebastian. Matthew won the 2019 Kenan Thompson Ultimate Comedy Experience at Caroline's on Broadway. I was there when he won the thing in Vegas. I was in the audience. I've known him from the Gladys Simon room at Comic Strip Live in New York City. This guy's for real, dog. He is so cool, so nice. He's not, Thank affected, you. <laughs> not affected by his fame. Oh my gosh. He was a host on HQ Trivia's game, HQX performs stand-up comedy throughout the New York City. He can do over 250 impressions. To, he can do over 250 impressions ranging from Ronnie Malek, Malek. I don't <laughs> even know. Ronnie Malek, yeah. <laughs> Thank you. To Barack Obama and Johnny Carson. I know those. <laughs> he was recently named by The Thrillist as the, one of the best celebrity impressionists on TikTok. Do you understand what we're talking about here? My dentist doesn't even do the good impressions. <laughs> While at home during the quarantine, in addition to the TikTok content, Matthew created a mini late night talk show called Quarantine on IGTV. You can follow Matthew on Instagram at Matter Day Night Live on TikTok, <laughs> yeah. Matter Day Night Live Twitter, M friend 1998 on YouTube. You better follow this guy. He's going places. I can't believe he's even talking to me, you guys. Holy Toledo. Welcome to the stage. Somebody I really actually met in New York City. I'm not lying. Matthew Friend. Hello. Oh. Thank you so much for having me. Hi, Matthew. Thanks for How being are you? here. Thank Great. you. Thanks. You are so okay. Most of let's let's just break it down. Most impressionists suck at comedy. <laughs> at which one? At comedy? Yeah, they're either yeah. good at, at impressions or impersonations or yes. writing jokes. Yes. You do both. Yeah, no, I uh, I try to, I do both. Uh, as, as, as you mentioned, um, I've been doing this talk show from my house called Quarantine uh, Weekly, where I, it's kind of a mini late night style talk show where right off the bat I do uh, like eight or five to eight monologue jokes. Uh, so that answers your question. And then I do uh, various bits, character, original characters, impressions. Um, so yeah, I, I definitely, uh, base, it's, it's, a, it's a good question because I, I think that is definitely uh, something that uh, a lot of impressionists are labeled as like either you're just an impressionist or you're a comedian. But, you know, in terms of what I'm trying to do, um, I look at you know, like a guy like Rich Little, for example, uh, and you know, he was, he's obviously, he's still alive and uh, he is one of my biggest uh, inspirations. And, and I look at sort of what he was able to do uh, vocally and in terms of his performance, but I also kind of aim to mix that with the satirical wit and, and comedic writing of guys like Dana Carvey and Phil Hartman. Uh, and so I kind of like to mix vocal accuracy with, um, you know, writing and, and satire and like political satirization. Wonderful. I see you as a future talk show host on Late Night. Thank you. That's, that's the dream. Thank you so much. <laughs> yes. I heard you up at, at Comic Strip in Gladys Simon's room. Yes. And, and I remember hearing you do jokes and no impressions. Yeah, that, that, that might have been a time where, so uh, that was the first room. I think that was, I, I did, first show I ever did in New York uh, I think was at like Greenwich Village Comedy Club at like some 
open mic thing. And then Gladys was that that first room was like one of the first rooms I ever did. And uh, she was really helpful in terms of giving me input and advice. And I think there were a couple of times where I was like, I want to just see what it's like when I don't do any impressions and I just get up there and do uh, straight jokes, which is uh, a challenge. And it's also, a, you know, because as a comedian, as a performer, you want to constantly be improving and, iter and iterating and building on new ideas. So um, yeah, that might have been a really, that might have been one of the rare times where I don't do impressions. Because usually I'll be doing voices and impressions in my act, but I definitely like to mix in jokes. There as I well. want to know now, if you will, when I was walking through Home Depot when I had a really bad cold and my voice went out and I was sounding like um, uh, the frog, Kermit the Frog, all of okay. a sudden, I, you know, and it was because I had a cold, but my voice came back and I could never, I can't do impersonations or impressions. I can't. I, yeah. This is this is me doing DB Cooper. Do you know who DB right. Cooper was? No, actually, I, I, I and I'm an old soul, so I, I'm shot. Who who was he? An actress? He was the or man. He, oh, he was an actor. <laughs> okay. He was, he was the man that jumped out of the plane. It plane took off from Portland, Oregon, my hometown. I was okay. working at the airport that day. Okay. And it was in the 70s. The plane takes off and goes to Seattle, 166 miles north. And he jumps out of the plane and they never found him. Wow. So nobody knew who he was. Do you have an impression of this person? <laughs> yeah, are you ready? Okay. That was right. <laughs> That's that was it. Great. That's all I can do. Very good. Very good. <laughs> In other words, I can't do impression. So <laughs> what made you, when did you do your first impersonation impression? What's the difference between the two? <laughs> uh, between an impersonation and an impression? Mm -hmm. Well, great. Which first of all, uh, I, I will answer your first question. But second of all, that is a fantastic question. And I'm very glad you asked it. Very, re really, very great question. Uh, first one, uh, I was four years old when I began doing my first impression, which was of Austin Powers. Uh, so I watched that movie. It was all my parents' fault. They got me into it. Uh, so I, I watched that movie. I began doing impression of Austin Powers, Dr. Evil, Fat Bastard, Gold Member, all those characters. And then I would do teachers and my uncles and my grandparents. And it kind of became an obsessive thing. And, you know, I didn't realize it was a marketable skill when I was younger, but I was just really obsessed with comedy and, and master and just sort of talking like people. And, uh, and then when I got into like, as I started to get a little older, I realized I could do all these different celebrities. So now it's kind of become this Matt, this larger list and repertoire over of over uh, roughly 250 impressions. Uh, and I have a list on my phone, so I am keeping track. Um, oh, wow. uh, but yeah, so it's just an, a very obsessive skill, I would say. Um, and to answer your question, it's a, no one really ever asked that question, the difference between an impression and an impersonation. Uh, Rich Little actually talks about that in, in his, he had a great book that came out. Uh, and basically, I think that the difference is an impersonation is more on like uh, you're trying to you're not necessarily exaggerating any element of the person you're doing that whoever the celebrity is a dead on representation of who that person is an impersonation might be what you'll see in Las Vegas more of like a guy doing an Elvis impersonation who is like got the exact look down the mannerisms whereas an impression is what you'll probably see more often on a show like SNL where there are you know, extremely talented performers like Kate McKinnon, who are taking as someone like Hillary Clinton. And it's not necessarily a dead on vocally, even though hers is amazing, but like a dead on vocally accurate, uh, you know, impersonation. It's more of like exaggeration and taking out bits and pieces or finding a hook in someone like what Dana Carvey would do with George H.W. Bush, like not gonna do it, like that kind of thing. Uh, so I think impersonation is, fully capturing the person and impression is kind of more exaggeration and there are impersonations I do there are impressions I do I like to kind of mix them both but I always go for vocal accuracy thank you because I couldn't figure out if you were impersonating or I'm doing impressions and that helps me that you just admitted you do both no wonder yeah. I was confused yeah <laughs> it doesn't have anything to do with the fact that I'm a geriatric old lady awesome <laughs> no. I like this oh. this is going great so what's your favorite impression or impersonation that you do? 
Um, I mean, I do a lot of a lot of like younger, more current references in terms of like comedians and actors. Uh, Rami Malek, he won the Oscar for uh, Best Actor for portraying Freddie Mercury in Bohemian Rhapsody. Uh, so I really love doing him. Hi everyone, this is Rami Malek. I'm talking like this. Uh, I do like Timothy Chalamet, Army Hammer, John Mulaney, John Oliver, Sebastian Maniscalco. Uh, I can kick it back old school, Carson, Jimmy Stewart, those guys, but uh, I keep it my act fresh and relevant. It was funny, I saw, actually, when I was in Vegas in January, I dragged my parents who came with me to see Rich Little's show. I was like, I have to meet this guy. He's still alive, I have to meet him. And his whole act was basically dead. Uh, but he admitted that and he, and it was really funny. He's like, my whole act is dead, but I'm still alive. And I just found that to be really funny. Um, Me too. He had, um, he shows a lot of, it's like audio visual, you know, he's got the, yeah. and it, it, to me, it, it's hilarious because hilarious. he's taking things that nobody is familiar with right. and he's finding a way to use technology to make it current and for sure. So I found that brilliant. Yeah. You know, he doesn't have the same energy he used to, who, who could at yeah. his age, but he's, he's such a legend. He totally is. What are you going for in your impersonation and impressions? Like, what's the goal in doing all these voices? I don't, I don't even know why I'm asking it. It just came to my head and I don't have a filter. <laughs> Please uh, answer it. I, I mean, the goal, um, I mean, I want to be creating original content and, you know, uh, I mean, I think like the goal, the dream is probably SNL, Saturday Night Live. Um, that's kind of what I'm working toward, what I've always dreamt of being on. And if I were ever lucky enough to be on it one day, that'd be a total, total dream come true. Uh, so, I mean, I would say probably something like that. Uh, and I don't know, I, I mean, creating just, I'm just working on creating my own stuff, writing a lot, making as much content as I can. Uh, but I mean, the reason I say SNL is because I look at, you know, not necessarily comedy broadly, I look at where is the best place on earth to do celebrity impressions. And to me, one real, one place really comes to mind and that is and has been for a long time now, Saturday Night Live. So that's kind of what I'm, as evidenced by my username on Instagram, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a large fan. Uh, at Matter Night Live is named that for a reason, so. <laughs> What's your favorite episode in character if they're different on Saturday Night Live and why? Uh, I think I think actually like Lauren Michaels said in an interview once that everybody always says that they're that the best cast the best cast on SNL is the cast that they grew up with. Uh, so that was like for me Bill Hader, Andy Samberg, Jason Sudeikis that cast. Um, I mean there are so many great characters. Um, I really one of my favorite sketches is. Actually, with a sketch where Mike Myers is on this playground uh, and he's like strapped, tethered to the like this pole and like he can't escape because he's like a toddler tethered to a pole and he like tries to run forward. But the like <laughs> like the thing keeps pulling him back. Uh, I love Stefan, though, obviously popular choice. Uh, Bill Hader's character. Um, I love Drunk Uncle, Bobby Moynihan. Uh, there are too many to count. I don't know. <laughs> so I love, Ken I love Kenan's What's Up With That sketches. It's always stuck in my head. My favorite is the weekend update when they do the news. It's not an impression. It's an impression of news people. Right. You know, right. I just love it's just a skit. No, I love it too. So comic spot. I love it. I know you've loved it. Let's keep it going. I need your help. I developed it so you out there can get to know comics, whether they're brand new or 45 years in the biz, we're going to get to know them so you'll know who to love. So all I need you to do is donate to my cash app and that is Linda Marcus Smith. I would really appreciate it. Thank you. So what if you're, you've got you've been on Hoda and Jenna, Jenna and you've yes. been on and Maniscalco knows your name. I mean, <laughs> you are so close to being on Saturday Night Live. I mean, do you realize? Are you waking up in the morning, go any day this phone could ring? I don't know. I, I'm just kind of working and keeping my head down and just trying to keep making as much stuff as I can and hopefully, uh, hopefully things will. Uh, happen as I dream and as, as I hope but I think all I'm doing right now is just 
keeping as much, keeping the momentum going, just creating as much on a daily basis as possible, doing as many things like this as I can. And uh, hopefully with continuing to work hard, these things will start to happen as they already are starting to happen. I mean, today yes. the thing was crazy. Sebastian comment, uh, putting my impression of him on Jimmy Kimmel was crazy. Uh, so uh, it's it's really exciting, especially because at you know at the point in life where I'm at right now, 22, and I think I'm getting a good start here. So I'm excited to keep it going. Yes. So when you were on, um, I had a really good question. What was that question? I forgot it now. I never do this, and I'm I'm sort of starstruck by you, which is <laughs> weird because, you know. Um, I don't usually get like that with some of the other people, but you know, you're, you're famous and like, <laughs> I know you, and this is so weird that you're, you're so famous. So, okay. Let me go to a basic question. You won this huge contest with Kenan Thompson. How, how cool was that? And you know, it, does he have your digits and does he blow up your phone in the middle of the night? <laughs> it, uh, it, uh, that was amazing. It was a total dream come true. I, was found performing at Gotham Comedy Club in New York. And then they had me come to do the final showcase at Caroline's uh, in New York City. And then I ended up performing and I ended up winning. And uh, he brought me to SNL, then backstage and the after party. And it was like a crazy night. I mean, my brother came with me. It was like so surreal. Uh, and nice. yeah, I mean, I, I, I was just totally grateful for the experience. And I mean, he is, the times I've met him, I mean, he's been, like the nicest guy ever, uh, especially like, you know, he's just so successful and just so generous with his time. Uh, and the fact that he's like doing uh, a talent search like this, trying to, you know, bring up the next generation of comedians and talent is just a uh, very inspiring and uh, like humbling and just an amazing thing that he's uh, been doing. So I'm super grateful to have started that relationship and i mean i hope to keep it going i don't know <laughs> now that I've the question i wanted to ask you came back to my brain so um that's what i call a full circle moment at this age so my question is when you're doing an impersonation or an impression you're doing complicated ones you're maybe doing so and so doing so and so doing such and such you know, you're not just oh, like so yeah i mean there are, there are bits do you mean when i do an impression of someone's impression yes yeah so i have like a couple different things that i do so as mentioned i like to go for vocal accuracy and make sure that i'm doing justice to the person's voice um so like there are things that i do i do like i have a bit called the trumps where i do impressions of famous trump impressions so i go this is my impression of alec baldwin's impression of donald trump on saturday night live and then i do We've got a great show. It's going to be fantastic. Boopity 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 ba. It's like, and then, and then I do a uh, Colbert's drop. I go, I know a dot dot dot, a dot dot a dot dot dot, the liberal crooked media a boopity do. And then I do Fallon's drop. Okay, okay. Then I do my real Trump where I go, well, this is a total disaster, and I'll tell you what. I'll tell you what, folks, those were the worst impressions. You've never seen anything like it. I'll tell you what. In all my interviews, I've never said boopity boopity ba. I don't do it. Thank you very much. Thank <laughs> you. So stuff like that. Yeah, I get into it. Well, have you done an impression or impersonation where the crowd turned against you and they didn't want you to do it or didn't uh, like it? Uh no, that that hasn't that hasn't really. I I mean I did do a show in like Long Island where it was a more conservative audience where I don't think they were as amused by the uh <laughs> Trump impression the first time. But then I, then they realized I'm a I was a young I'm a young kid and my impression wasn't like necessarily so biting. Uh so I think they appreciated it, but for the most part, they, uh, um, yeah, they they like it. I think. <laughs> okay, and so um, I don't know how much time you have to be on here, so you need to tell me when you got like a couple minutes left. No, yeah, I, I have like you know like five ten minutes. It's totally okay. Great. Okay, I do one other impression of an entire family, but I can only do it for you if you know about the Sound of Music movie. Sure. Okay, here's my impression. Ready? Yep. Okay. And now you can see me. And now welcome back to the stage, the winners of the Austrian festival, 
the Von Trapp Family Singers. <laughs> Welcome back to the stage. <laughs> you get the point. I do. <laughs> I can only do people that nobody's seen. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. it. It connects well to that airplane one earlier. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, um, so you're now on a whole nother level and you're going to get haters and jealous people. Trust me, because I should know. <laughs> I've arrived. <laughs> Kidding. So let's speak to that just a little bit about getting better, getting noticed, getting attention, and how you handle your newfound fame and staying well, humble. Well, Cause I, I, know I, don't know that I, I don't know that I have any fame, but uh, I don't think I have any fame at all. I think I've just been lucky to get some online, some traction and I had that Today Show experience. <laughs> I mean, uh, I'm just working, just doing the same stuff that I've been doing and just continuing to try to improve and get better and uh, that's kind of all I care about, just making sure my stuff is funny, relevant, and that the impressions are really good. Yes, and you're so humble, and you're not affected by by your fame. When I saw you, you know, I knew you in New York, and I came up to you, you were sitting kind of in a corner while other people were gabbing around you. You were busy studying, and I approached you and asked if you remembered me, and we stood there and talked. You're so humble, <laughs> and you just got done killing it, on the stage at a contest at Jimmy Kimmel's. You're yeah, so I, humble. Thank you. Uh, yeah, I mean, what, before shows, uh, like sometimes I like mingle, but I, I like to be kind of uh, in my own zone. It's like an athlete wearing headphones before they go play. Like that's why you see like LeBron wearing headphones before he goes to play a game. Like I need to get in my own zone uh, and I can't really be, I need to be focused and kind of visualizing how the performance, I, like, I mean, I, I visualize kind of how I, how I want the performance to go, what part of the room I want to make laugh most, what part of the room I want uh, to hear certain parts of an impression that I'm going to do. So, uh, no, but uh, thank you. That, that's very kind. I mean, very true <laughs> about you. And I, would, I, I notice when people are humble and I notice when people are affected by their fame and their worlds apart. So do people come up to you and go, I've got an impression for you, or did they come up to you and say, I've got a joke for you or both? When I'm at like comedy clubs, like when that happens, uh, people will like say, um, yeah, like you want to hear an impression or like whatever. Uh, but I mean, it's like no one's going up to a doctor and being like, uh, you want to like see me give this surgery to my friend? Like, it's pretty good. I'm pretty good at it. Uh, like no one's going up to a lawyer. Like, you know, I, I have some thoughts on uh, this law here. Okay. I, it needs to be amended. Like, shut up and do your thing. And I'll do my, Don Rickles would say, let me do the funny stuff, okay? I mean, let me do the funny stuff. Uh, so, no, that's, that's happened before, yeah. Yes, today there was a, I went to the office here at the apartments where I live and um, a man came in there and I live with a bunch of veterans who are amazingly awesome, don't get me wrong, one second. The electricity came on. <laughs> now I can shut the door and talk about the veterans. So I go to the office and there's a veteran in there who who cannot hear and he's right. wearing, but he's wearing headphones. Okay. And he's going into the office at the wrong time. You know, they have rules here. You have to, if you're, if you're related to the government, it's layers of rules. Right. And he, he goes in to get food and coffee in the office at the wrong time so they're telling him he can't be in there because it's not the right time so then he starts spinning it like you know well what is the right time to, they don't give out right times it's like you have to be aware you have to notice if they put the food out for the day or if they're in the middle of still doing it he doesn't have that awareness and he he can't hear and he's wearing headphones and he's in the office and they're trying to tell him don't open the refrigerator. It's not available. <laughs> and like, do you ever run across something that it's not a famous person, but it's such a crazy thing going on. You want to do an impersonation of that. Um, yeah. I mean, that's probably more of like a, like a character, I would say like that definitely happens. Um, like in terms of impressions I do on stage, typically it's better when the person is more famous and I'm able to, the audience will know who the reference is. Uh, but yeah, I mean, that, that probably sounds like it lends itself more to like the development of an original character. 
I would say. Got it, got it. Now, how do you get to the level of impersonation impressions that are as complicated as what you do? Great joke writing, and you're doing an impression or impersonation of somebody doing an impersonation impression of somebody. How do you do that? It, uh, <laughs> it's just a very obsessive thing. I mean, I don't, I don't know. Like people ask me, like, how do you do impressions? And and, and I always say, I mean, uh, not to be like arrogant, but I mean, it's like asking someone, how do you play basketball really well, or how do you how do you sing well? It's like I think yeah. a lot of it is natural talent mixed with uh, like an obsessive quality uh, that is just it can't necessarily it can't really be taught. I would say yeah. it's just kind of like I'm con I've always been obsessed with movies and TV shows and celebrities and uh, like I was the kid who was watching even though I gr was born in 1998 I was the kid who grew up I was watching Rich Little and Carson clips on YouTube uh, yeah. and uh, and then obviously Judd Apatow movies and Seth Rogen and you know like Seth MacFarlane like all the newer references and newer stuff but um, it's just kind of an obsessive quality, I would say. That's how I do it. It's talking like a lot of people and you have to be totally obsessed. It's absorbing. It's absorbing what they're saying and what they're doing, folks. It's very good. Very good. <laughs> oh my gosh. So have you ever taken on an entire family, like everybody in the Trump family talk? to each other at dinner or uh i do i haven't necessarily done a whole family i do scenarios like that though on stage where i do like celebrities interacting with each other like obama and trump playing golf together that's or... that is such a brilliant bit that you do i love that one thank you yeah so it's like yeah i, I go like well barack it's very kind of you to accept my invitation to play it's very nice well uh donald <laughs> The only reason I accepted your invitation to play is to show to the American people that there is a continuous, peaceful relationship between United States presidents. Well, the only reason I invited you is because I thought you were Tiger from the picture that pops up in your contact on my iPhone. That's very good. Stuff like that. <laughs> See what I mean, you guys? That's what I call brilliant writing and impressions and impersonations all right. together. That's Thanks. brilliant. Thank you. Yes, I am so excited. What do you want to tell people going through a pandemic? Or we didn't come with a manual. Here we are, comics. We can help people cope. Do you have any any clue? Uh, is there any impersonation you can do and tell people how to cope? Um, I mean, I, I mean, I, in terms of me, I would just say just keep creating. That's pretty simple. Just like. You don't have to stop. You can just keep making stuff. Uh, there's no excuse now in this world. Uh, anyone can put anything online and then you can all of a sudden get on the Today Show or something. So it's like, like crazy stuff can happen. But I think Texas Senator Ted Cruz would say, make sure you don't wear a mask because masks are for stupid people. And then uh, I would disagree with that, but that was Ted Cruz. That wasn't me. Uh, so put on a mask, folks. And uh, Linda, thank you so much for having me. This is, this thank is, this you, is Matt Friend. We go by Matt Friend, not Matthew Friend. Yes, right? Matt. Yeah, and follow me on Instagram, everybody. <laughs> yes, Matter Day Night Live on yes. Instagram. Yes. And your, and your YouTube is? Uh, you can, same thing, Matter Day Night Live, same thing. Yes. Follow me I there. Hope, I hope you're on Saturday Night Live very soon. I, thank I, you so Rather much. than later. Thank you so much. Great to see you again. Great to see you. Bye, Matt. Bye. Everybody's talking.